Barbara. And I'm Karen, and we're the Sync Sisters. This is our tech bit on the settings for Safari. Okay, as we've talked about before, um, every app has settings that you can customize to really make it work the way you want to, and Safari is no different. So we're going to go into our settings app, which is this little gear thing. I'm going to tap on that. And I'm going to scroll here on the iPad. Um, it shows over on the left your apps that you can customize. And then when you tap on one, it'll show you what you can customize on the right. On the phone, just because it's narrower, um, this will be here with your apps. And then once you tap on something, this screen will come up and show you what you can customize. So I'm going to scroll around until I find Safari. And there it is. Now I tap on that and it comes up what I can customize. The first um, area is related to searching. And the first one is you can choose your search engine. So if I tap on that, um, you can pick Google, Yahoo, Bing, or DuckDuckGo. I've never even heard of DuckDuckGo. <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? <laughs> it is fun. Duck, you got to check Goose, it out. Maybe? <laughs> um, of course, it's hard to be Google. <laughs> right. So we have Google on, but you could change that if you want. Then down here you have search engine suggestions, and um, you can see this little toggle switch. It's green. That means I have it on. If I tap it, it's off. And what that means is um, it will, when you um, start typing in the um, text field in Safari at the top, um, you know, um, green apples, um, down below it, all these suggested websites and things will start coming up. You might have noticed that before. Um, and this is where you can turn it on or off. If for some reason you don't like it, I think it's very handy because you don't have, most of the time you don't have to finish typing because you'll see something that is what you want to choose. Then the next, next one down is spotlight suggestions. And if you watch our tech bit on Safari overview, um, we do cover this. Um, spotlight suggestions is really handy. Um, when I'm in that top text field again and I start typing, um, first it's going to show the um, search engine suggestions that we just looked at. And then below that, it's going to show Spotlight suggestions. And Spotlight is the search engine on your device, on your iPad or your iPhone. And that will show you um, on the page. So for example, uh, say I was reading a article on Lake Minnetonka and I wanted to find a specific bay of Lake Minnetonka. I would type in Halstead and then it would show me, if I went to the spotlight suggestions and I have it on, it would show me all the areas on the page that Halstead is listed. So right. it's a great way to find things right. on a page. And I think this is like a little secret that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, yeah, and it's great. And it shows you, so in your, and we show that in our Safari overview tech bit. That's why I said. Oh, there you go. Okay. There I was. I was, <laughs> I ran away to get something. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> then um, the next one is quick website search. And I have this on. And um, what this is, is um, if I type in the name of a website before what I'm searching for, it will go to that website and search. So I could type in wiki, like Wikipedia, yeah. wiki apples, and then it would search that website for apples. So that's kind of handy. Yeah. And then the preload top hit is um, it will load your, uh, what you are, the first things the first thing that it comes up with, it'll load it right away in the background. So if you choose that, it'll come up really quick. For those that are really, really in, in a hurry. hurry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you pick that top one, you're going to get it preloaded. Okay. Okay. So the next little section is the general section. It's titled general. And the first thing is passwords and autofill. Now, this is um, a pretty important thing to talk about because a lot of people don't realize that when you save passwords in Safari, they do show up in here. And if you don't have a passcode lock on your iPad, anyone can come in and see your passwords. So right. that's why you need a passcode lock on your right. devices. This mm -hmm. is, you know, you're, you're storing information here that you don't want people to see. So first thing is autofill. Um, automatically fill out web forms using your contact info, previous names, passwords, credit card info, and so on. This first section is using contact info, which I love. I don't have to type my name, my address in, all of that. So you have that on. And then 
my info and it says Barbara Zade. And if I tap on that, it'll bring up my contacts and I could go in and I could pick, you know, the card that I want to use. Obviously, you. <laughs> obviously you want it to be yourself. So if it doesn't say you, go find your card. And that's another thing. You should have a card for yourself in contacts. You have right. to have one. So. Uh, Siri but, uses it too. Yeah, Siri uses it and you can share it with other people so they automatically get it in their contacts. It's a good thing. The next thing um, is names and passwords. So do you want it to fill in um, passwords? And if I go to save passwords, guess what? I got to type in my passcode. That's if you nice. didn't have one, you know, right. it would go right in and someone could see your passwords. So you don't want to do that. The next thing is credit cards. Um, that's a great feature um, in Safari and on uh, the Mac platforms is the ability to save credit card information so that when you're shopping, you just tap in the field that says credit card number, enter your credit card number, and up come your saved credit cards. You have to remember the security code on the back of your card, and that's it. Sometimes you might need the date of expiration as well, but those are pretty easy to memorize. And I love it. I think it's a great feature. I and again, too. when I go into it, it needs my passcode. Oh, but, yep. of course, you know your passcode. You right. could enter it and check. If you forget, too, that's handy. That's very handy, right? For the, especially for the passwords up there. Right. If, for example, you're, you know, you're, you're wanting to give the password to somebody. Somebody calls your, oh, whoops, your husband calls and says, <laughs> I need the password. Earthquake. Yeah, we're earthquake. not in Minnesota. We're in California. Uh, oops, we had California. an earthquake. Get okay. that straight now. We're good. We're okay. good. So that's what that is. We'll go back. And the next thing is Favorites. So this is a quick way to access favorite bookmarks when you enter an address, um, search, or create a new tab. It'll come up with favorites. Or I could have it come up with, like, the weather if I wanted to. Right. So that's a nice feature. Open new tabs in the background. So if you're reading an article on a page and it references, uh, it says click here to read more about this one thing, and you want to read that but you don't want to read it right now, if you click on it, it'll open that tab in the background, and you can remember to look at it later. Show the favorites bar. So that's in Safari right underneath the address bar. Um, you can have your favorites show up in a line where you can just select them very easily, uh, or maybe you don't like that. You can turn that off. Show the tab bar. I'm not sure why you'd want to turn the tab no, bar off, but you can. Yeah. And, you know, again, to save maybe space. Maybe on the phone. It's, maybe on the smaller, phone. Old, you yeah, don't have the mini maybe. iPad like you do. Yeah, maybe on the phone. Uh, yes, you didn't get to that I have a 6 this. Plus. Yeah, she's always <laughs> digging me about that. Uh, show the tab bar. Okay, so that's what that is. Block pop ups. Do you want it to block pop ups? Websites. Sometimes you'll enter something and it'll pop up a window. Now, this used to be more of a problem, didn't it? Because it used to be ads that would pop up yeah, yeah. that you didn't want to look at. Right. But now, so much of the functionality of a website is a pop-up right. that really you have to turn this off. Because right. otherwise, most websites aren't going to work right Right, they're going to say, go into settings and turn that off. Yeah. Right. So that's the general section. Then we have privacy and security. And the first one is do not track, and that uh, primarily involves Safari's ability to track where you've been and what you've done. On the internet. On the internet, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to follow you to the bathroom. <laughs> but um, I think that it's a good thing to have on. I like to have my experience customized. Safari then knows where I'm going, what I'm doing, and will show me ads and things that are relevant to what I want to experience. Right. Some people don't like that, so this is where you could turn it off. Right. So. Similar is um, block cookies. Uh, different websites will add cookies to your iPad so that when you come back to their website, they'll remember what you purchased, what you looked at, and things about you. Um, again, some people just don't like that, but I, I think it's great. I want to yeah. go to, you know... Old Navy, and I want them to know what I want to see. Right. You know, right. I don't want to waste time trying to find it myself. Right. I mean, they don't buy it for you or anything. No. They just show you right. stuff that's relevant. Yeah. Ads, things right. like that. And so you can customize this too. You can always block it so no one can do cookies, or you can uh, do it from current websites, or this is the one we like the most allow from websites I visit. So ones that you go to a lot. Mm -hmm. And then always allow, you could choose that also. 
Then down here is a fraudulent website warning. Um, you probably want that on. Yeah. Um, it'll just alert you if there's something wrong with the website. The, and the security company. isn't right. good and yep. they've been rated bad or something. Right. Yeah. And then down here in blue, you see clear history and website data. What that's going to do is if you tap on it, it's going to clear all of your cookies and browsing data. And history. Right. Yeah. Which um, normally you wouldn't want to do, but maybe if you are... Um, bought a new iPad or iPhone and you're giving your old one to someone else, this is definitely a good thing to do. Clear out all your history and cookies and stuff so they don't have it, your information. Right, and then they can build their own experience. Right. And then the advanced tab is for programmers. It allows yeah, them yeah. to debug uh, yep. websites right. on the iPad or iPhone. So that's our tech bit on Safari settings. Thanks for watching the Sync Sisters tech bit. And please subscribe to our channel.